You're saying Jesus. And all you gotta do is just say the name. Jesus. Jesus. And he's right there. He was there before you said it, but you got his attention when you call his name. He already knows your circumstance. He already knows what you're going to ask, but he delights in our asking. He delights in our communion with him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for another preaching opportunity. We thank you, Lord, that you awoke us on this morning and guided us to this place. We thank you, Lord, for your people and for your plan. We ask now that you allow your Holy Spirit to rest the little mind of all that is said and done in this place on this day. Give me the wisdom of the words for your people that they might take your word, plant it, water it, fertilize it, and reap in new seeds. This is my prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. This is the time set aside for worship and the time set aside for preaching. We are in the midst of the Memorial Day weekend. We want to take time to recognize all those who have lost their lives or even given up their lives so that we might have an opportunity to come before you a freedom of expression of religion, a freedom of love for one another. It's also a time of graduation and promotion. Amen. Can I hear amen? Amen. amen. We have promotees in the house, some going from 7th to 8th grade, some going from 7th to 3rd grade, Everybody being promoted, we're claiming it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Here we go. Round of applause. All of our promotions. Amen. Turn in your Bibles with me to the book of John. John, the 21st chapter. I want to read just a few scriptures from verse 15 through 19. 15 through 19. Somebody said 15, 16, 17, 18. Oh, that's only five verses. That ain't too bad. <laughs> Amen. John 21, 21, 21st chapter of John. And it reads like this. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than thee? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will, be, you will stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. Follow me. Jesus told Peter, follow me. When we first meet Peter, we find him by the sea, and we see that he is a fisherman. Jesus comes by and calls Peter to follow him. 
And Peter leaves his business, he leaves his livelihood, he leaves his family to follow Jesus. Amen? A little later we find out that Peter thought he knew what he was doing when he dropped everything to follow Jesus. He thought he had things all figured out. This is because Peter and, and, and those other disciples believed Jesus to be the long-awaited Messiah. Well, they were right, but uh, what they were expecting was a little bit different from what they got. And that meant that uh, they thought Jesus was going to overthrow the Roman government and, and he was going to set up a new kingdom. And Peter wanted to be a part of that. And, and, and he thought that uh, he was going to get in on the ground floor of what Jesus was about to do. Amen? Amen. And sometimes it's good to get in on the ground floor. I mean, those people, if you bought Apple stock 20 years ago, Huh? When it was pennies. Some of those people is, uh, you know, they're looking up from the, the penthouse floor today. Amen. It's good to get in on the ground floor. But here in our message this morning, we find that even Peter failed Jesus over and over again. Even Peter. And Peter, he was the strong one. He was the boisterous one. He was the, 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 the one that took no mess. <laughs> Uh -huh. he, he loved Jesus and he wanted to protect him in any way that he could and, and, and Peter was the one that would uh, almost like Jesus bodyguard uh -huh. yeah uh, during this time we, we, we find Peter sticking his foot into his mouth quite often finding himself in trouble a lot because he could do things on his own and he did not submit to Christ the way he should have because he was headstrong. Anybody headstrong in here? Amen. 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 Me too sometimes. Amen. Me too. I ain't mad with you. But here in our passage we find that even though Peter failed Jesus over and over again, he is restored by Jesus. Restored. There's power in restoration. Jesus has restoration power. Amen? There's power in restoration. He was restored by Jesus. Sounds like a theme from our Sunday school lesson. Amen. Huh? All right. In chapter 21 uh, of the book of John, we find Peter graduating, if you will, from being a disciple with his own desires and goals to a full-fledged apostle dedicated to spread the gospel of Christ. There's a graduation taking place right here. I want you to take notice. Peter is graduating. Now, this happens, I want you to know, this is post-Calvary. Jesus has already died and gone to hell and been resurrected and is walking with Peter afterwards. This is after Peter has denied him three times. So he's talking with Peter now and he is restoring him because Peter feels bad. He knew he was going to get a talking to, but this is not the talking to he was expecting. Huh? He knew that uh, he was the one that came out and was big, bad, and bold and said, Christ, I will die for you. I want to go where you're going. And Christ told him before the cock crows three times. You will deny me three times before the cock crows twice. And it happened. It came to pass just as Jesus said it would. And Peter was convicted. Amen? Imagine if you promise something to someone, a son or a daughter, a brother or sister even, even a good friend, but you make a promise and you failed on your promise. You came up short. 
you found yourself lacking. You were not able to do that which you said that you would do. And up until that point, your word was bond. Your word sometimes is all you have to go on. Amen. And you give people your word and, and, and you say, you can take that to the bank. And Peter found himself taking it to the bank and he found that the bank was closed. And he couldn't catch that check that his mouth had wrote. But here we find Christ fixing them a little breakfast. They're sitting out on the beach. And they're talking because they're boys and they like that. And Christ said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, you know I love you. Come on now. He said, feed my sheep. Peter, son of Jonah, do you love me? Come on now, Jesus. You know I love you. What's up? What's going on? Tend my lambs. Peter, son of Jonah, do you love me? Come on now. You are Christ. You are God. You know everything. You know I love you. What's up with this? third degree I'm getting in. He says, feed my sheep. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Do you follow me? Will you follow me? Can you follow me? Can you understand me? Do you feel me? Do you feel where I'm coming from? Do you feel where I'm going? Can you follow me? Are we seeing eye to eye? Do we have an understanding? Can you feel me now? How you like me now? Huh? He has embraced Peter, who was feeling like he was on the outside looking in. He had walked with Christ for three long years. He had learned to love him as a Messiah, as a Savior, and as a friend. And he failed him at a critical moment. And he felt like he was on the outside where once he was on the inside, he was in Christ's inner circle. They was ace boom coons, they was boys. He cut off a man's ear for Jesus. Would have done it worse than that. But, you know, he was a Christian. So, you know, just the ear. That don't give y'all permission to go cutting off nobody's appendages. Amen. But he was passionate about his love for his brother. He was passionate about his love for his God. He was passionate about his love for Christ. Amen. And so when he let him down, when you let your parents down, when you go to school and you act a fool and and, 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 and your mom got to come up there to the school to, 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 to get you out of the principal's office and you let her down and you leave out of there with your head hung down. That's how Peter was feeling. And Christ came to restore him. Came to embrace him, to gather him back into the fold, to say, it's all right. Your spirit is good. You meant well. And I love you. I still love you. Do you still love me? Will you feed my sheep? Will you follow me? Are we on the same page now? I know I'm not the one that you thought I was when I first came. I'm not that guy that you had in your mind. I'm not riding in on a big white horse with a big shiny two-edged sword. I'm not slicing down the Romans 
uh, like y'all wanted me to. That wasn't my way. It never was my way. It never was my will. But I am here to fulfill the acceptable year of the Lord. I am here to fulfill the plan of God. If you can feed my sheep, if you can tend my lambs, if you can follow me, it'll be all right. Amen? Amen. And we saw that Jesus embraced Peter. Peter embraced the embrace. Sometimes we just want to be held. Sometimes we just want to know that it's all right. Sometimes we just want to know that we've been forgiven. And words is one thing, but an embrace is something all totally different. We want to feel loved and appreciated. When you feel the embrace of Christ Jesus, when he restores you to your original place, when he knocks the rust off of you and buffs you up and makes you shiny like a new penny, makes you fit for his purpose, and he asks you, do you love me? And the ultimate expression of love that we can have for him is to keep his word. Keep the word of God to do what thus saith the Lord, to live our lives as living epistles before men. Our lives sometime are going to be the only Bible anybody ever reads. They know you go to Love Christian Center, I'm going to watch you see what you do and then I'm going to do what you do. Because you're one of those Christian folk that God is blessing. You, you know, you, you got that, that aura about you. You just all that and a half a bag of chips and, 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 and you got it going on. And, and I'm going to watch you, but I'm going to do what you do. Hmm. We got to be careful Amen. what chapter we let them read. Amen? Amen. Amen. I've gone all off my notes, but y'all got the gist of this. <laughs> It's graduation day. It's promoting day. Amen. Amen. We're being restored up in here. Amen. School's out for summer, but guess what? Learning ain't over. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got two months now to prepare for the next grade. Amen. Two months to prepare for your promotion. You're going to see a whole class you have never seen before. From a whole different perspective, you're going to get a new desk, Amen. a new chair. You're going to be looking out of a different window mm. at a different face at the front of the class. Amen. Amen. You need to make preparation. Amen. All summer long, will you follow me? Yeah. Will you feed my sheep? Mm. Huh? Peter got promoted. To the next level. He was a disciple. Jesus took him and embraced him and made him an apostle. And Peter preached like nobody's ever preached before. And on the day of Pentecost, he said about 3,000 souls were added to the church. Amen. Peter kicked up some dust on a muddy road way back in that day. And it continues up until today. And we have that same commandment to go ye therefore preaching and teaching and making disciples. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Tend my lambs. Do you love me? Follow me. Let us stand. This restoration day.